اجمعین اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصوم ومن كان مريضا او على سفر فعده من ايام اخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العده ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is the first Juma of Ramadan al-Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak and every moment, every second of this great month is full of blessings and has rewards for us and Allah says, yeah, can we turn this echo off, please? I'm not, I'm not a musician, you know, or artist. I'm giving a speech there. No? Who, where is Karisa? Can you turn the echo off, please? So, this month of Ramadan, it's so valuable, so precious, so worthy that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said that, you know, if a person misses one fast of this month and then fasts for the rest of his life to make up for it, he will still not be able to do it. That is the value, you know, the Prophet attaches to this month's fasting. You know, many of you will be wondering, what is so special about it? Can you see this iceberg on the screens, everybody? You know what an iceberg is? Barf ka pahar, okay? And what is really interesting about icebergs is what? You only see a little tip at the top. 80% is under the sea, okay? I had the pleasure of actually going to Greenland, up in the north, uh, near the Antarctic and there you know we were actually our ship was anchored near a massive iceberg and the idea was this was done by people who were interested in preserving the earth and protecting it people interested in climate uh, crisis and they wanted to show religious leaders and I was one of them look it's real the icebergs are melting okay you know, we could actually hear the water flowing from the icebergs as they were melting. So it's real, it's not an imaginary idea, you know, as uh, sadly Mr. Trump said, you know, this is an old hoax. It's not hoax, it's a reality, climate change, and we're already seeing the consequences of it. But here I'm talking about something else. This is just to show you about the iceberg, okay? So this is a very powerful metaphor for understanding the hidden values of other things. So I'm using this, I want you to use this as a teaching tool, okay, to learn that, you know, you see things and then underneath them, there is so much more which you don't see, perhaps you don't even appreciate, you don't even know. And the problem is you get caught up in just in the zahir, just in the what is outward, what is manifest, but you forget to see that underneath it is a huge world going on, you know. 
Is everybody with me? So I'm using this as a teaching tool. I want everybody to understand this metaphor, okay? Metaphors, Quran is amazing at using metaphors. It's the Ara, we call them, Jana. It's, it's really very powerful in using uh, the metaphors to get the message across. A very powerful way of getting a message across by using uh, metaphors. So you, rather than you know, um, s saying the actual thing, you use, you say, it's like this. So you say that um, he is like the s his son. He is the son. He is the son. What does that mean? You know, well, what, what, is, what, what, do, what do we know about the sun? Well, sun is really beneficial. It's bright light. It gives light and heat. Okay, it's really beneficial. Okay, so what he's saying is, this guy is a sun. He benefits. He shows, he shines. He gives light. He gives warmth. Are you with it? That's called a metaphor. Okay, so when you say that, he's a sun. Okay, that's a metaphor, yeah, no? And so we use these metaphors, and the Qur'an is full of them. This is one of the ijaz of the Qur'an, yeah, no? It's one of the miracles of the Qur'an that it uses so many um, of these metaphors to explain things to us. So I want you all to try to understand this, because once you do that, inshallah, you will see that, you know, many people are just caught about the fasting. All they think is, oh, it means not to eat and drink, okay? Not to have marital intimacy, and it means, uh, you know, um, getting up and in the morning to have the seri and then doing the iftar, and that's fast, okay? Well, it isn't, yeah, no? Actually, it is far more than that, okay? And this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for example, in one hadith, you know, we read that he says that, Mallam yada qawla zure. The, the, the person who doesn't leave, who doesn't abandon lying, who doesn't stop lying in this month, yeah, no? uh, and wal amal bihi, and you know, things associated with that, gossiping. If he doesn't do that, then falaysa lillahi hajatun bihi. Then Allah has no need of his fasting. Allah has no need of his fasting means what? His fast should, is, is meaningless. In other words, it is important, you know, that we also control our tongues, all right? And then he goes on to say, uh, you know, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, so Allah doesn't want him to just leave the food, yeah, no? It's far more than that, okay? There is something more deeper. And I want you to understand this. This is called, in men, nowadays we also call it maqasid al-sharia, understanding the objectives of Islamic sharia and Islamic laws. Uh, what is the objectives behind them? And I think, inshallah, you know, we ignore that. We just look at the surface. We forget the, what's underneath. And what did we say? Underneath is the real thing, okay? And this is why the Quran says, la'allakum tattaqoon, so that you become pious. God-fearing, conscious, aware person, yeah, no? And, but let's go back to, before we come to this diagram again, I want you to be reflecting on this, you know, as, as, as I speak. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa praised the greatness and the blessings of this month when he said that, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانْ فُطِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ jannah. When Ramadan comes, the gates of heaven are open. Wa ghulliqat abwabu jahannam. And the gates of hell are shut firm. Okay? And then he says that, and wa sul silati shayatinu. And the devils are chained. Subhanallah. What he's really saying is look, something amazing is happening. When you in, make those intentions in the morning, Nawaito, uh, when you say that, wa bisawmi ghadin nawaito min shahri Ramadan, you know, when you make that intention that I'm going to fast today, okay? And so much happens in your head, so much should happen in your heart and in mind, and, and, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasulullah here is saying, well, what's going to happen now is you are going to be prevented. You are now being protected. This is now a firewall around you. Okay? As soon as you make that intention of fasting, Allah puts this firewall around you. And he, what does he do to the shaitan? He chains them. 
What does he do to the uh, Jahannam? He, he, he actually restricts and stops all those gates that would lead you into doing evil. But on the other hand, he opens all the avenues, all the means to Jannah. Is everybody with me? So, you know, again, this could be a metaphorical, what the Prophet is saying, okay? I, and I think it is, it's best to read it in that metaphorical sense that he's saying, well, look, as soon as you begin to fast, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Allah supports you. And this is to enthuse us, to encourage us, okay? And, you know, he goes on to say, for example, that um, he says, Fil jannati samaniyata abwab. There are seven, uh, eight gates of heaven. One of them is called Rajan Jana, and that is only for the fasting people. SubhanAllah. Again, you know, he's encouraging us. Okay, you know, when you do that, you are actually yourselves entering through the gate of Rajan into paradise, Jana. And he goes on to, you know, um, praise the greatness of this month when he says that. You know, he says here, Man sama Ramadan iman and wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambihi, wa ma kama Ramadan iman and wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambihi, wa man kama layla tal qadr, iman and wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zamb. This is a hadith on Muttafaqun alayhi, both in Bukhari and Muslim. This shows its authenticity and it's as though, yes, it came out of the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And he's really saying three things here. You know, whoever uh, fasts in the month of uh, Ramadan, uh, and, and, but with what? Iman and ihtisab. Two in interesting things. Iman, of course, would mean very simply to believe in the oneness and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihtisaban would be with fear, with the sense of being sincere, genuine about it, and with the sense of trepidation as well. Okay, am I going to be meeting the standards of this amazing ritual or not? Okay, so that's where the Iman and Ihtisab are important, Jana. What happens to them? It's a getting, it's a way of getting maghfira. It's a way of achieving maghfira, forgiveness for your sins. Okay? And he repeats this for, uh, for uh, Taravi. He says, whoever comes to the masjid to do Taravi, okay, his sins are similarly forgiven. And the one who will stay up on the Laylatul Qadr, similarly, he will be you know, protected like that. Yeah, no? So, you know, here we have an uh, amazing uh, bouquet of ahadith which really uh, praise the whole idea of fast fasting and what happens in it. And this is what the bottom part of this uh, iceberg is. This is where you are actually, how much thought are you putting into this? Uh, how much mindful, how mindful are you about your fasting, okay? Uh, and and uh, how much, ref how reflective are you in this month? So uh, what I'm trying to show you is that, look, by just saying, oh, I, I, I fast, that is a fast of the ordinary person, according to Imam Ghazali. He says, that's okay, everybody does that fast. But we wanted to go beyond that, you know, to become a special person who fasts, and not only his stomach is fasting, his eyes, his ears, okay? His mind, all of these take part in the fast, in the sense that now you are not going to engage in any sin whatsoever. Is everybody with me here? This is the really crux of it, and that is what makes fasting such a powerful spiritual exercise that delivers us from the shaitan, it takes us and it makes us truly pious people. And that's why it's لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you become pious, God-conscious, aware, attentive, highly alert people. Highly? Alert. Yes. Are we alert or not? Yes. Well, I hope we are. You know, fasting, of course, uh, you know, as, as a, a, a scientist and particularly from biological sciences, uh, you know, I have lots of evidence, uh, I've talked about it, and inshallah perhaps I'll present it again sometime, about the health benefits. Those are good in themselves, you know, 
we load those and inshallah today after the Juma, we've got Dr. Arshad Latif who will be actually talking about the health benefits of fasting. So I hope some of you will stay and listen to him. In fact, all of you will stay. Dr. Arshad Latif is an amazing uh, GP, amazing, mashallah, good brother who is always, you know, caring about uh, our community. So he will be here after Juma to talk about health benefits of the fast, yeah, no? But let me say a few more things in order to uh, really uh, enthuse you so that you can begin to develop the bottom part of the iceberg. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to just stay at the top? Eh? They just know the zahir. They just know the open, the outward. They don't understand what's beneath it, okay? I hope you're not like that, okay? Let's now change. And that is what Ramadan is about, changing us to become people who think about what is beneath it, okay? And I hope this will also make you appreciate the value of Islamic rituals, the Sharia of Muhammad and the teachings of the Deen of Allah. They are really there for your good, okay? You are the benefactors of them, Diana, and you need them. Without these, today we see the world is suffering. This society is suffering all around us, you know, because it lacks these teachings. We have them and yet we don't fully value them. So the idea is, you know, it's a reminder to us, you know, that we need to move to this situation, you know. So the Rasulullah for example said, you know, there are some people who fast, but get nothing from it, except hunger. He said there are some people who come and do taravi, get nothing except insomnia and tiredness. What does he mean? He means they've missed out on the bottom part. <laughs> They're just looking at the top. Okay, I hope you can see the value of what I'm saying to you. Be reflective. If you're not, uh, you consider yourself as a moron, to be honest. Okay, a loser. Khasirun. Seriously. And that is not what Rasulullah wants. That is why he keeps on saying these things, okay? He's being harsh about it, Diana. Stop being a moron. Stop being a foolish person. Wake up, you know? You know be people of ulul albab. Those are the followers of Muhammad, people who use their mind, okay? And then he goes on to say, um, well, I, I've told you this. This one is beautiful hadith from Zayd ibn Khalid. It says, Man fattara sa'iman aw jahaza ghaziyan. Falahu ajru misli. He says that, uh, you know, whoever helps the fasting person open his fast, in other words, gives them a date or a water or feeds them and helps them to open their fast, will get the same reward as the fasting oh, no, person. No, no. And anybody who jahaza ghazian, whoever supports a warrior, a person who's getting ready to defend, in other words, the soldiers, he also is, will get the reward of his jihad as well. Yeah, no? So here, you know, we have Rasulullah encouraging us to appreciate other people who are fasting uh, and, and uh, you know, let's pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us uh, this fast that uh, we, we begin to go from the top to right to the bottom, inshallah, and begin to strengthen our hearts and minds, our spirituality and our character development. Rasulullah pointed out, just finish off with this, he pointed out Three things about fasting, that fasting, um, three moral values that fasting in particularly develops. First one he said this is shahru sabr, patience. It really makes you a patient person. Patience means you are willing to wait. You don't react and you don't, uh, you know, immediately, but you wait and wait for the right moment, okay? And that's what fasting is teaching us, to be sabir. The other one he said is, you know, to be kind empathy for those who uh, don't have enough, okay? So, you know, this is what he will develop, generosity in us, inshallah. So there is um, g generosity, there is empathy, there is kindness that, you know, we learn uh, through this month. And then it says, finally, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you become grateful, thankful, appreciative. People who acknowledge the good in others as well, Jayana. So inshallah, uh, you know, may Allah bless us with this amazing month. Uh, you know, be proud of it, okay? 
mashallah, we see our children fasting as well, uh, and we should encourage them. You know, there are evil forces here who say, don't get children to fast, yeah, no? Well, fine, you know, you say that to your own children. Don't tell us Muslims not to get our children to become great, okay? Who are you to tell us, all right? And, and of course, this is where we need to be challenging, you know, people who don't understand our deen and are imposing their ways on us, okay? Yet we are supposed to be living in a democracy where we have this freedom uh, of our religion uh, and our, our great cultural values, inshallah, Allah Aziz. You know, may Allah help us to appreciate what these amazing, you know, these exercises, you just see a little bit, but there is far more to fasting than there. And I hope you will go and reflect and read, you know, my book on the uh, uh, Ramadan, the spring of righteousness.